Has the view finally woken up to reality? The panel this week was a welcome departure from their usual partisan takes, finding themselves incapable of defending Fulton County DA, Fannie Willis over her sabotage of the Georgia election interference case against Donald Trump with an ill-timed alleged affair. This is a tone you don't find often at The View, but that mixture of disappointment and frustration made for an oddly interesting segment, especially seeing Joy Behar and Anna Navarro go after Fannie Willis, so let's get into it. So, the criminal charges of election interference in Georgia are one of the many legal battles Trump is fighting right now. But his attorneys are calling for the case to be dismissed in Georgia and for Fulton County DA Fannie Willis to be disqualified amid allegations of an inappropriate relationship with one of her three prosecutors. Follow it. Could these allegations compromise the case against him? Is stepping down the best move here? Those are two separate questions by Joy Behar, but I think there's a connecting thread that not too many people see. If it doesn't sabotage the case against Trump, Fannie Willis's blunders will potentially delay it until after the election and give Trump a lot of leeway in case he's rejected. If Fannie Willis does willingly step down, it may help other prosecutors quickly swoop in and resume the case, but it will also be an admission of guilt by the DA that will deal a very serious blow to the entire narrative around the case to begin with. And you know why? Well, ever since Donald Trump has thrown his weight behind a motion by his attorneys to have Fannie Willis disqualified, the Republican-led Georgia Senate investigation has been embroiled in a political angle that DA Fannie has also decided to capitalize on. Instead of the legal system with the moral high ground prosecuting a case, it's become a petty game of politicking with Republicans versus Democrats. Senator Josh McLaurin has clearly called the investigation a political theater, despite the fact that Trump's move to go after Fannie is being deemed politicized. There's only one person that wins from reducing the case to that, and it's Donald Trump himself. Democrats say a Republican-led Senate investigation into Willis, who is a Democrat, would be a political exercise in an election year in an effort to undermine Fulton County's criminal case against Trump. It's, it's certainly overreach, and I think that the Republicans do feel like this is some kind of uh, payback or retribution. Going down the same road as Trump, both the DA Fannie Willis and the Democrats in the Senate will not have much to come back at Donald Trump with. And perhaps it's that realization of unwittingly playing Trump's own game that has woken up the view panel to just how weak the prosecution has become. We used to say prosecutors were like roaches. Like you get rid of two and then like 10 more show up. So even if she <coughs> resigns and even if he resigns, yeah. there are just gonna be two perhaps even better prosecutors to take their place. So, so, why does so that's he, not the why issue. Why does Trump keep saying she should resign? Well, I think the issue is that there is an appearance of impropriety if you are sleeping as the d district attorney, if you are, I'm allegedly. She doesn't admit to that. She's not admitting to right. that. If you are sleeping with your special counsel that you appointed to a job and that person makes money doing that, right? So that, that that's a problem. Yes, that is a problem, Sonny. And it's a stark admission from the panel that you can only get when there's no more way to spin the narrative or get out of an intellectual corner. Fannie Willis has not just shot herself in the foot, but she's thrown under the bus years of work by the prosecutors at Fulton County. I mean, sure, prosecutors can be replaced in some resemblance of bipartisan public trust, can be regained, but all of that takes time and time is hardly on their side with Donald Trump potentially speeding toward a second term. In the meantime, it's not just the alleged affair and misuse of funds that's a godsend for Donald Trump but also many of Fannie Willis's actions in the aftermath of the revelations where she's practically doing herself even more harm. Trump's attorneys have accused DA Fannie of trying to foment racial bias in the country by falling back on her and Nathan Wade's race as the only reason they're being questioned. And it's clear that this fact is also not sitting well with The View, judging from what Anna Navarro says here. If you are uh, sleeping with a prosecutor and paying him $650,000, if, 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 okay, if, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, green, purple, brown, it is wrong. Yes. And it is uh, unethical, and I think it's against the rules of professional regulation. I'm very pissed off, too, because when you are a woman of color in such a high-profile position, you know... <laughs> that the scrutiny that's going to befall yeah. you is greater than on anybody your, else, your stuff and she needed stay. to have kept her house clean. At least someone had the gall to say it. That's why I said no one is impressed or intimidated by Fannie Willis pleading in church 
and making it about her race. It's that mixing of religion and racial politics that for long has been a major fault line in the country. Only to be resurrected in an incident like this, and here's something else that this is now doing. It's backfiring for Fannie Willis in a spectacular manner to the point that even a repository of all leftist talking points, like The View, isn't willing to come out and defend her. There's a larger paralysis in the Democratic Party having realized that Fannie has chosen to go on a downward spiral in her career, and they can't afford for the vital Trump Georgia case to go down with her. I just personally am pissed off about this. This is the case of her lifetime. It's a sweeping RICO case. Yeah. It's a tough one. I think she actually has the what she needs to prove this case. She does. One of my best friends, Cassie Hutchinson, spent months in Atlanta, protected by U.S. Marshals yeah. to testify for this case. She's a brave and girl. And now it may all fall apart because she, these well, allegations of impropriety. Well, it's sunny. It's not going to fall apart. No, the but, it, but not, it could delay until after away, the but election. I, I do agree that it could be delayed but because they would have to get new prosecutors. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's gotten the case in such a bond. Mind. On one side, you got the Republicans on Donald Trump's side trying to disqualify Fannie Willis and her lead prosecutor, and on the other side, you've got Democrats and fellow prosecutors wanting the same. Except they want it for a different reason, which is that Fannie Willis has become way too controversial to continue the case against Trump, the new cases and investigations she's facing in Nathan Wade's divorce, and the Georgia Senate Committee are likely to delay the election interference case to Trump's benefit. That's why attorneys and law professors, including those from Georgia State University, are calling on Fannie to willingly step aside so that the prosecution against Trump can resume on time. And in the middle is Fannie Willis herself, caught in a tangled web of her own making, with no way out in sight. District Attorney Fannie Willis has neither confirmed nor denied a relationship with Nathan Wade and has denied claims she acted improperly in hiring him. Wade has not responded to the allegations. Mm. You know, this is the Trump playbook. Postpone everything. Postpone the border. Postpone it's the working. economy. Yeah, postpone everything. The, the, and postpone this case. He figures, oh, maybe I'll be in office and I won't have to go to jail. That is his whole MO. Perhaps Joy Behar's frustration for the delays should be directed at Fannie Willis herself. The prosecution by the Fulton County DA is exactly three years in by February, and the progress made so far is in plain sight to see. Right now, Donald Trump isn't playing by a very different book in this particular case than any other politician would. He's trying to push the dates forward and move a motion for disqualification against a prosecutor that has lost a lot of credibility in the last month alone. What has derailed potentially the strongest case against Trump? are the very bad moves by the lead prosecutor both before and after the allegations. And in all of this mess, the calls to strengthen the prosecution against Trump may prove to be too little too late as we rapidly approach the November election.